I'm going to show you how I'm going to take this 20 litre key keg and turn it into a hydroponics still water or cat key still water deep water container. I've not done this before but I have a pretty good idea of what I need to do giving it a lot of thought. Shouldn't take too long so let's get started. How am I going to do this? Well the main theme is to take a plant pot and fit it into the pot of key keg like this. This is the outer shell and this fits in here very very nicely. Plant in here the roots will come out the bottom and sit in the water. Now the first thing I did with this key keg before I did anything else is check that it's not pressurized. This one was and I do have a little video of the tools that I used to deflate it so if you want to see that check out my other videos in my channel. It'll show you the little key keg tool or tap that is used to release this valve at the top and let the pressure equalize. Now I'm going to use the full length of this key keg and I'm just going to use this as an example. In future and depending on what you want to use and where you want to put it you can always shorten the length so that's just to note that I'm just building a full length version of this if you want to shorten it you can cut sections out. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some masking tape around here just to mark off where I want to cut it. And remember, in a key keg like this, there's two sleeves. There's the outer sleeve and the inner sleeve. I want to use both, and I want them all to line up. So the first thing I'm going to do is put some holes in this so when it's put together later, it stays in one piece and adds some rigidity. So the first thing I'm going to do is put some masking tape around here. I'm going to use the existing line. It's a good indication that this will be level as we go round. Now the reason I'm using masking tape is because the marker pins will stay better on the masking tape. A hole here and a hole here and we're going to cut in between. We don't have to be particularly accurate. And now I'm going to use a soldering iron to punch through and the holes all line up, make sure I've got it all aligned. The one last thing I have to do, and I've just remembered, is always try and put a marker line on your container. So when you do go to line these holes up, if you have misaligned the holes going round, you've got the right hole lined up with the inner hole. Now I'm using a soldering iron, I'm going to punch the holes through. I use a soldering iron now instead of a drill because it's much easier to punch the holes through. It doesn't depress the key kick at all. It's just let the heat make the hole as against forcing a hole through with a drill. Okay, I'm going to make one more hole and this is where I'm going to make the first incision to cut this first section off without cutting the inner layer. That's quite important. So I want to cut the outer skin and remove this top section from the bottom section. So now that I have made that little dimple, this time I'm going to use some scissors and very carefully pierce this outer skin, as I said, not cutting the inner skin. So this is a little bit fiddly. Hence another reason for using the masking tape. Just take your time. I think I've done that now. Start the incision. Gently just small snips. Now I could continue with the scissors, but I'm going to try and use my plastic cutting tool and see if I can get a neater cut. I only use these now in most cases just to get it started. So using a cutting tool like this, if you can get it inserted, then this will not deform the plastic. Need a hammer. Right, now that's off. So we put this aside. We now pull this inner one out. Actually, before I do that, let me just make another marker line here 
So, just to be sure. Okay, so that's the outer piece done. We put this to the side. So I don't know if you can see there, there's the two holes and the other holes round. So I cut the original one here and that's the outer skin. What I want to do is create a lip for that outer piece. So I'm going to cut here now all the way round, about an inch up. Leaving this on here obviously to act as a nice line. I'm going to make another start hole to make it easier. Just a small one. Take the scissors again, gently, so we don't deform the plastic, but just enough to get the electric scissors in there. Okay. So what I want to do is remove this bag now and I want to take this cap off because I don't need this. So if you want to see a video on how to do that easily without damaging this, then do again have a look at my channel. I do have a specific video on how to remove this quite easily. So let me just go off and do that and we'll be back in a few minutes. Five minutes later. So back now with the bag and cap removed, we're now going to insert this into the inner liner. So I'm going to turn it upside down and force it down inside to the second row of holes here. Okay. It doesn't have to be exact, but as long as we cover the holes, I think we're good to go. With that inserted in there, I'm now gonna put new holes into this cap that's now turned upside down. The reason why I bought, built this so tall is because one, I just wanted to simplify the task of showing you, but also if you did do a container this big, I reckon it would be quite hard to move around. Obviously if you shorten it, there's less volume of water, it'd be quite easy to pick up. Now with this inner lid turned upside down, this has actually turned it into something quite rigid. But still, to make it a bit easier, I have thought to use all of the key keg, the optional thing and this is the reason why I created this lip on the outside was to put this back onto here rivet it in I say rivet it in put those retaining studs in and that way with enough holes around here we'll be able to easily lift it by the key keg handles instead of flexing the key keg itself well that's the idea let's see how we get on to enable this to be removable, I'm going to use my little car fascia studs again, but without the screws inside. And the reason I'm thinking I don't need to rivet this is because if I need to clean out any debris from the bottom of this container, then I can easily just pull these out, pull this up, clean it out, and then reinsert this. Okay, so that's the inner with the lid turned upside down for retainer, so that's not going anywhere. So we can take this off now. I don't need this anymore. It's that inner container, and I think you're starting to see the principle here, water in the bottom, plant pot in the top. Now the reason we've kept this part is again to make it more rigid. I'm going to slip this inside here, lining up my holes. Which I didn't get to do. Right there. My plan, and you don't have to do this, is at the moment this inner is quite removable. However, 
I'm guessing when this is full of water, you really don't want this to slip off the bottom because this is a stand. Without the stand, it'll all fall over, especially if you make a shorter version. This is only staying here because of a small bit of friction between the two skins. And this is the reason why I did all the holes beforehand. I'm gonna take that rivet out and put it in the next hole down, locking the inner to the outer. So again, using my reference line, lining up the right holes with the outer holes, push that down. And now that hole should line up with both the inner and outer skins. And we're gonna put the rivets back in. So I have to make a few adjustments. There we go. Outer skin now attached to inner skin, and we could leave it at that. But I still want to use my key keg top. So again, lining up the line, key keg is back together again. Well, actually, after I put some more rivets in. So there you go, key keg back together. This is now removable. I need to take this back off again, put the plant pot inside. So here's the plant pot from earlier. I'm just gonna put in more holes to let the roots come out much more easily. So this is now my plant pot with a few extra holes and slits and bits and bobs to allow those main roots and air roots to come through. I'm gonna insert that into here. So in here is a sweet potato and then that's what I want to transfer into the hydroponics thing and see how it grows. I'm pretty hopeful. This is done very well in this key keg starting off. Basically, I just put a sweet potato in here, let it sit there for a few weeks and it spawned some shoots as you can see. Hopefully that will pick up and then we can harvest the leaves to put in salads. Okay, so we now have two sweet potato plants ready to put in the hydroponics. Back over at the key keg hydroponics. Before I put the plant in, I'm gonna fill this up with water right to lip because that pot is only gonna sit about halfway. Add in some food. bottom of that is now sitting in the water put back on the hand put back in the rivets and now we've got a handle which we can now lift this up with that's pretty, that's pretty good now I'm not going to leave it like this I'm now going to wrap the lower half of this in a black plastic bin bag so that way light doesn't hit that water and reduce the algae growth we've got a pre-cut bin bag to length and put that down there and I'm only going to tape up the top I'm going to leave the bottom untaped that way you can lift this up and possibly look at the water levels make sure that they're on the right level on the roots and then put it back down when everything's okay and so there you go I think we have the first key keg 20 litre cat key hydroponics unit like and subscribe to see how this gets on and see future projects keep well keep safe and i'll catch up with you guys next time